Welcome to Guns N' Roses Central, and today I want to do a true story episode about Shannon Hoon and Guns N' Roses. Now, Shannon Hoon was, of course, the frontman for the band Blind Melon, and they first rose to fame back in the early 90s. Now, before they really hit it big, uh, Shannon Hoon made an appearance on Guns N' Roses' double album, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Now, Axel and Shannon's relationship goes all the way back to Indiana. In fact, Axel used to be friends with Shannon's sister. So Shannon Hoot's from a town called Dayton, Indiana, and it isn't the sort of town that's crawling with rock stars. So back in 1990, there weren't even a thousand people in the whole town, and one of which was Richard Shannon Hoon, better known as Shannon. And he was a pretty typical member of the high school graduating class of 1985, which was the same year that Guns N' Roses got back together. He was an athlete with a love of jam bands like the Grateful Dead. So Dayton just happens to be adjacent to a significantly bigger but still small Lafayette, whose population was 43,000 or so in 1990. But for a small town Lafayette, it turned out some impressive famous names, one of which was Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin. Prior to forming Blind Melon, Shannon ended up gigging a lot around the Lafayette area as the singer of a band called Stiff Kitten, a band that would be much improved with a couple omelots. It was during these years that he wrote a song called Change, which later appeared on Blind Melon's debut album. By 1989, Shannon would end up picking up and moving to Los Angeles, and at the same time, his sister, who was friends with Axl Rose, called and asked a superstar to help her brother out. And Shannon soon found himself working at the Cat House, the same nightclub frequented by the members of Guns N' Roses. By 1990, Guns N' Roses were already working on their double album, which was called Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, their follow-up to their critically acclaimed Appetite for Destruction. And it was at that time that Axel asked Shannon to provide vocals on several songs off the albums, including Live and Let Die, Don't Cry, You Ain't the First, November Rain, The Garden, and the alternate version of Don't Cry. Shannon would also end up appearing in the Guns N' Roses music video for the song Don't Cry, and as the song started to go into heavy rotation back in 1991, fans started to wonder who this new person was in the video, and fans started to get intrigued. Who's the new singer in Guns N' Roses? Is he a permanent member? And Hoon was a star before most people had even heard of his band. Shannon also appears in the Making Effing videos for Don't Cry where he's interviewed about the song and he reveals that when he was back in Indiana he used to play in a covers band that used to cover the song Don't Cry and at that time the Use Your Illusion albums of course hadn't come out and nobody even knew the song Don't Cry and he even talked a bit about going into the studio with Guns N' Roses and originally the plan was for him just to sing some background vocals on the song but then Axel decided that him and Shannon should just harmonize with each other the entire song. Throughout 1991 and 1992, on several occasions, Shannon Hoon would end up joining Guns N' Roses on stage to perform either Don't Cry or You Ain't the First. Probably the best known instance of him showing up to a Guns N' Roses gig was the 1992 show that Guns N' Roses played in Rosemont, Illinois. Now one thing a lot of people may not know about the band Blind Melon and Guns N' Roses is that during the user illusion years, Blind Melon was being managed by the same company that Guns N' Roses were being managed by. So they were both managed by Big FD Entertainment, which was run by Doug Goldstein. So during 1992, Guns N' Roses would be playing a couple shows in Mexico City in April of that year, and Blind Melon would be opening both of those shows. And then the following year, Guns N' Roses would be hitting the road again, and Blind Melon would be opening a lot more dates for the band. So during the Skin and Bones tour, Half of the dates that Guns N' Roses were playing, they'd normally have Brian May's band open for them, but those other half of the dates, whether they be in the US or Europe, would be open by Blind Melon. So earlier in the year, Blind Melon's guitarist Christopher Thorne gave an interview to Appetite for Distortion, and he talked about touring with Guns N' Roses, and here's what he really had to say. He said, it was a huge deal for me at the time. They're the biggest band in the universe, referring to Guns N' Roses at that point. There's nobody bigger, so sort of have Axl Rose kind of bless you and say, I believe in these guys. You kind of get the finger on your head being blessed by Axl. We knew it was a big deal and we were really grateful. We were really grateful and Axl was really good to us. People try to get me to say stuff about Axl and I can't really say anything about him other than he might be crazy, but he was lovely to us and he helped, our, he helped out our career so much. and He was always cool to us. He also added that uh, he was crazy Axel for sure. I saw him pretty crazy for sure. He went on to say, well, people were definitely scared of him. I do know that. I do know that the crew would just sort of back away whenever he would walk through the hallway. People were in fear of him. I wasn't because he was always so cool to us because we were Shannon's buds. He was always super cool to us, but he ran a really tight ship and people were on eggshells around him. I can tell you that. And then he went on to say, but it was crazy. He was a perfectionist. I would get to see him off stage every night and go back to his room and he would watch the entire performance and take notes. He was, he was a really pro. He, 
he was really a pro man i gotta tell you i learned a lot about being professional and he was very professional at that point they were playing stadiums and you just can't afford to be okay when you're playing stadiums he took it really seriously and ran a tight ship and they were amazing every night Thorne ended up talking a bit more about Guns N' Roses. He talked about going down to the record plant in the early 1990s with Shannon Hoon to see him put background vocals on the songs I previously mentioned on the Use Your Illusion records. And he said that Hoon recorded the vocals for four or five songs in one night. Thorne also talked a bit about uh, sharing Guns N' Roses' private plane. He said that blind male members would stay in the crew quarters and as soon as you walked to the plane there would be lobster shrimp in a bar. He said Shannon Hoon would end up in first class with Slash and Duff getting drunk each night and everyone smoked on the plane so sometimes the plane felt like a giant cigarette. He said many times Duff, Slash and Shannon Hoon were taken off the plane by several bodyguards because they were too intoxicated and Thorne said it was funny to get off the plane and see five limos for the members of Guns N' Roses and a tiny van on the runway for the members of Blind Melon. So there's an interview that some of you may have not seen with Shannon Hoon. So when he was out doing press for his band, he was uh, being interviewed and he was asked about Guns N' Roses, to which he got kind of annoyed. He said, did we not have a little talk before the whole thing happened? So he had asked before that the, uh, he went on the air to not talk about Guns N' Roses. And according to the host, Dennis Talbo, after the interview, Shannon ended up punching him in the face as they went off the air. If you guys want to see the interview, I have provided a link to it down below. It turned out Shannon Hoon's appearance in the Don't Cry video ended up linking Blind Melon and Guns N' Roses in the mind of reporters and almost every interview that Shannon Hoon would do or the members of Blind Melon would do would always bring up questions about Guns N' Roses and reporters would want to know gossip about the band. Now one of the most notable performances that Guns N' Roses did with Blind Melon happened in Switzerland in the spring or summer of 1993. Guns were towards the tail end of their two and a half year Use Your Illusion tour and Blind Melon opened for them at that show. So it came out from in Rolling Stone several years back that there was a Shannon Hoon documentary being made and it was being uh, made by a photographer named Danny Clinch. So he started a Kickstarter campaign, raised more than $100,000 and was able to successfully meet his goal. So he talked a bit about the Switzerland gig. So Shannon had lost a bet to Axl Rose and ended up coming on stage while Guns N' Roses was uh, midway through their set. He came on stage naked and delivered a pizza to the band. So according to the photographer, you can tell from his little mischievous grin, I'm going to go out and deliver this pizza to 50,000 people with no clothes on, Clinch says. He was not afraid of anything and he had no inhibition whatsoever. He delivered the pizza and then he sat down and played the bongos. I guess it was funny. So if you guys have read Craig Doeswalt's book, uh, Welcome to My Jungle, he was Axl Rose's personal assistant during a lot of the Use Your Illusion tour. He wrote about the Shannon Hoon incident in Switzerland. So he said in June of 93, Blind Melon and the Choir Boys opened for Guns N' Roses at St. Jacob Stadium in Basel, Switzerland. Shannon decided to stick around after the set to watch Guns N' Roses play that night. Halfway through Guns N' Roses set, Shannon walked to where I stood on the side of the stage, enjoying the show with a few other members of his entourage. He was wearing a Viking helmet and carrying a large pizza box. If you knew Shannon, this wasn't out of character, so he thought nothing of it. However, without warning or notice, Shannon put the pizza box on the road case and began to take off all his clothes. All of his clothing. He was now completely naked and Shannon, I said, trying to question what he was about to do, he just smiled at all of us, calmly grabbed the box of pizza and headed onto the stage in front of 80,000 screaming fans. It was awesome. We knew he would be arrested, but it was still awesome. In fact, it was so Shannon Hoon. He walked directly over to Axel, who was in the middle of a song during an acoustic part of the show and shook Axel's hand. The band continued to play even though we were all laughing hysterically. Without a beat, Shannon walked over to the congas and joined in on the song and without a Domino's pizza shirt. He played the rest of the song completely naked, and when the song finished, the crowd went nuts. Axel just shook his head, probably thinking to himself that the press would have a field day with all of this. Shannon got up, waved to the crowd, took a well-deserved bow, and calmly walked off stage with both wrists placed in front of him, straight into the handcuffs of two awaiting police officers. It was the easiest arrest I'd ever witnessed. We all figured Shannon had done this before. One of the police officers grabbed Shannon's clothes, and they took him straight into the police car to a local station without incident. I assume he was booked on either poor playing of congas or indecent exposure, one of the two. So several years later, Shannon Hoon, at the age of 28, would pass away in October of 1995. It would happen uh, the, one day after the band's last gig in Houston, Texas. And just recently, there's been some more photos that have surfaced of Shannon Hoon's last performance. So I've read online that Axel never attended Shannon's funeral. There seems to be one rumor floating around the internet that the reason Axel never attended is because he couldn't get a limo from the airport to the funeral, which I'm guessing is probably not true. but. Thanks for watching, guys. So that basically does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts down below, and were you guys fans of the band Blind Melon? 
let me know in the comment section below and be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed that video and also be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on the latest Guns N' Roses news. You can alternatively go follow us on GNRCentral.com. Take care.